Hi, I'm Igor Escudero and I want to talk to you about my opera I Claudius and Claudius the God. <laughs> If I had to choose one word to summarize this opera, it will be polymodal. This was indeed one of the points that the audience had more doubts about. In classical music, people classify compositions as tonal or atonal ones, and the most of the audience in the premiere thought that I Claudius was a tonal opera. But is I Claudius a tonal one? No. In fact, it's a modal opera that uses the seven modal scales of our diatonic system. And what does modal mean in music? If we simplify, this will mean that this opera was composed only by using the white keys of the piano. Obviously, that's not the first time that these modal scales are used for composing operas or movie soundtracks. Yes, the theme of the force. It's a modal melody that can consider a Dorian one, although in my opinion it's a Neorian one. Let's pay attention about this. How does John Williams harmonize this melody? He uses a G minor chord followed by a D major chord, adding this F sharp. What's the difference about the I Claudius treatment of these modal melodies then? The difference is that in I Claudius this melody wouldn't have included these alterations, this F sharp. This is the reason because I Claudius is not a tonal opera. But this doesn't mean that it is an eternal one. It's modal because it's developed in a pure modal context, using tensions, adding these tensions without using modulations. But why don't I call it simply modal? Why do I call it polymodal? Well, this is because each character in this opera has different modes associated, different scales associated to the different characters. Why? Because I Claudius is an opera set in ancient Rome, and at that time they considered that each mode in music has an ethos associated, an ethos that in ancient Greek means character. The Dorian mode or scale implied nobility and strength. The Phrygian mode implied vehemence, and it was considered good for inciting people to anger. And this is the reason because I use these different modes, this ethos in this opera to show the different personalities of each character. This is why this is a polymodal opera because every character uses different scales that are overlap when different characters interact. Moreover, each character has indeed two ethos, two different scales associated. Why do I use two different scales, two different ethos for making each role distinctive and instead of only one. Well, this is due to the different methods in theater and in cinema that I use to distinguish characters. I use one mode, one ethos, to show the external personality of each character, what we see, an emperor, a slave, whatever. And I use another ethos another mode to show us the internal moods, what this person feels and thinks, what goes inside him. Let's see some examples. Livia, the Empress, she's pretty evil and everybody fears her. 
For this reason, she sings in the Locrian scale, a very unstable mode that includes the fourth of the devil, a forbidden interval in music way back when. Indeed, this Locrian mode is used in every evil event in this opera. <laughs> Everybody knows Livia's weakness, except for Augustus, who is completely blind about this. Augustus sings in the Mixolydian mode. But what happens if we put together a Locrian and a Mixolydian melody? A Mixolydian mode. When we put together a Locrian, Harmony, sweet harmony. This is the reason because Livia seems to be nice when she is with Augustus. Despite of being a model opera, I Claudius has some change of tonality and modulations too. That happens when Livia stresses out Augustus in public. She adds tensions into the harmony by using complex modulations and Augustus solves all of them, showing us his politic abilities. The opera I Claudius includes not only ancient musical scales, but also ancient melodies, like the Seikilous Epitaph, used when we see the first true love of Claudius, Medulina Camilla, who obviously dies poisoned very soon. <laughs> For Hero, do we have Jewish music? For Caligula, we have the enigmatic scale. Byzantine one, when he becomes a god. We have heard the trombones, we heard them all the time when Caligula pretends to be a god, because in music trombones are considered the voice of God. We have lots of other instruments associated with other characters, like the bassoons for Claudius. We also have bitonality in this opera. It happens when Livia acts as a lovely grandma with Claudius when she actually hates him. She sings in a sweet Aeolian melody, in a Aeolian mode that is used in this opera for filial relationships. But the accompaniment betrays her because it evolves in a local way. It's the same thing with Messalina. She pretends to be a new Medulina for Claudius, but she actually is going to be a new Livia. This is the reason because we listen to the Medulina theme. We hear the theme of the Empress Livia, a rhythmic leitmotif in B minor who reveals her true nature. Claudius sings in the Ionian mode. This is almost the only scale we use in common music nowadays, and that makes us emphasize with him as the main character. We feel closer to him than the other characters in the opera. In the past. You have thought of me an idiot, most of you, 
in the plot. At the end, Claudius becomes a new Augustus and Messalina wanted to be the new Livia. And we have the same thing done with Augustus. Everybody knows the real nature of Messalina except for Claudius. But how we can overlap a Locrian mode with an Ionian one? It will be obvious that something is going wrong. Well, in that case, what we have is an alternation of modes and melodies. When Messalina sings with a Locrian scale, she sounds like being in a dominant context. And when Claudius sings in a Ionian scale, we perceive it as a tonic resolution. the music we have just heard is a sort of involution of a previous one used for a discussion between Augustus and Livia when they were an age couple. video I would like to show you one more thing. The evolution of some themes like the Emperor theme. We hear it for the first time with Augustus. It goes into the Mixolydian mode in G major but when he dies we hear it in D minor associated with the external ethos of Tiberius. With Tiberius this theme goes into a Locrian mode due to his depravity and the influence of his mother. After he dies, this theme uses the enigmatic scale of Caligula. This strange theme solves into a tonal mode with Claudius in C that has a G as dominant chord, the mode and tonality of Augustus, and that is how we close the circle. Well, there are lots of other things in this opera. I may talk about them in the future. I hope you have enjoyed this one. Bye. Uh -huh.